Hi, and welcome to That's Ruddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What happened to the Flannan Isles Lightkeepers? Who was responsible for the Gardner Museum heist? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about the Ishinohoden. Ishinohoden means departing stone, but the massive mystery is also referred to as Uki Ishi or floating stone, and also as the stone treasure hall. Ishinohoden is considered one of Japan's three greatest enigmas. The Ishinohoden stone block is in a regular shape and has a strange appearance. There is a sacred rice straw rope, or Shimanawa, tied around the monument. The block measures 7.2 meters or 25 feet long, 6.5 meters or 21 feet wide, and 5.6 meters or 18 feet tall. It weighs 500 metric tons or 560 U.S. tons. The back of the stone block looks almost like a prism or the back of an old tube TV. The block was placed in the middle of a pond which makes the stone appear as though it's floating. The pond is said to have never dried up even during severe droughts, and the water level is said to rise and fall with the sea which can be seen from Ishinohoden but is not connected to the pond. The block is surrounded by three stone walls. It's made of hyaloclastite, which is a hydrated stone rich in volcanic glass. Hyaloclastite was formed by underwater or subglacial volcanoes about 70 million years ago. In order to reach Ishinohoden, one must climb up stairs that have been carved into the rock, or you can use the long road on the back side of the mountain. Once you get to the top, you descend a few steps into the sanctuary courtyard. It's believed that Ishinohoden was made during the Kufun period, which lasted from 300 to 538 AD. It's located in the city of Takasago, in the Hyogo Prefecture, and sits about 100 kilometers or 62 miles from Asuka, Japan. It's in a mountainous region known as Horenyama. There is a Yongsun stone quarry here for centuries. The stone extracted from this quarry was used to build structures and sarcophagi and for landscaping. The quarry was designated as a historic site and Japanese national treasure in 2014. Ishinohoden is also a national treasure. Strangely, the stone does not have any tool marks, so no one knows how it was carved. There are no nearby inscriptions or tools to indicate how it was carved, and there are no tool marks in the surrounding rock. Although Ishinohoden was believed to have been built during the Kofun period, the stone itself is believed to have been carved during the Jamon period, which lasted from 14,000 to 300 BC. This is the same time period in which the Yonagoni Monument, or the Atlantis of Japan, was also made. The Yonagoni Monument was found near Yonagoni Island in the islands of Okinawa. The Yonagoni Monument is one of the biggest underwater megalithic monuments in the world. No one knows how that monument was carved either. Some believe that Ishinohoden was made by the gods Ukununushi and Sukunobiku Na. Legend said that these gods accepted a challenge to build a castle in one night and that they left it unfinished when another god rebelled and the pair had to deal with that rebellion. Over the years, a Shinto shrine was built around Ishinohoden to worship and honor the god Ukununushi, or the great master of earth. The existence of the Ishinohoden stone was mentioned in the Harima Fuduki, which is an ancient historical record compiled beginning in 713 AD. The Fudoki said the stone was created by Mononobi no Moria during the era of Prince Shitoku, who reigned from 574 to 722 AD. The exact details of the Ishinohoden were not confirmed in the text, and no reason was given for why it had been built. The place where you can find Ishinohoden today was already a well-known place during the Nara period, which lasted from 710 to 794 AD. In 1862, Philip Franz von Siebold visited the site of Ishinohoden. He made detailed sketches of the area. 
Ishinohoden became a huge tourist attraction during the COVID pandemic that began in 2020. The legend of Ishinohoden said that more than 2,000 years ago, there was another great epidemic in Japan. Half the population died. The gods Ukunonushi and Sukuna Biko Na appeared in a dream to Emperor Sujin and told him, if you consecrate us, the ground will be protected. Once Sujin completed the consecration, the epidemic ended. It's believed that this is why the shrine was built, and during the COVID epidemic, people were looking to it for answers. There's a lot of mystery shrouding Ishinohoden. Why does it look the way it does? Some scientists believe that the rock once laid on its side before being raised to its end. Some believe that the stone was left behind by aliens, but this theory ignores the effort put into building such an amazing structure. Some scientists believe that the Ishinohoden was created by a long since lost civilization. No matter how it was made, how did the builders get such a large monument to the top of a mountain? Was it carved in its place or somehow dragged up there? Some believe that Ishinohoden was built as a tomb or a sarcophagus, but it seems to be too big for something like that. Who built Ishinohoden? Was it built by the gods or an ancient civilization or maybe even aliens? Was it meant as a tomb or was it built to help stop a pandemic? How did it get all the way to the top of that mountain? What do you think? If you're listening on Spotify, scroll down and let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ruddy Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ruddy Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.